Mountain Max Center in beautiful Las Vegas. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tass Mellis. I won't turn my head, guys. I will not turn my head. Might cause a problem. To my left, it's the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, <laughs> Lee Ellis. Friends. <laughs> and last, certainly not least, down yonder, wearing red, it's the bearded one, Trey Kirby. <laughs> hey, yo! Hey, yo! Okay, so this one's on me, fellas. <laughs> this Thanks. one's on me. We were calling the Spurs Blazers game earlier today on NBA TV, and I was very confident that we were going to get a wedgie in this game. I was so confident that before the game, I tweeted out, if we don't get one, we're going to dress as Vegas showgirls on tonight's finals episode of the starters here in Vegas. Why didn't you just say you would dress as well, a showgirl? Well, I thought yeah? you would look gorgeous, and I was right. <laughs> well, you are right. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, a Lannister always pays his debts, so do the starters. That's right. <laughs> That's on me, though, but, you know, it's sort of comfortable here in the dress. Yeah, yeah I don't mind it. A new look. I'm not that angry at it. All right, we got a fun show tonight. We're going to name our All Vegas first and second teams. We're going to talk about the Rockets' offseason, whether Luka Doncic should be considered the Rookie of the Year favorite. He hasn't even played here at Summer League. And we got the final very solid play of the starter season. Yeah, it's, it's a beauty. It's our final show, Lily. I know. So... With all that said, let's start with a little Day 5 Vegas Summer League highlights. Let's the start paint, with the Hawks and, and the Bulls. Trey Young, six threes over his first five games at Summer League. That's a little foreshadowing. Hanging out with Donovan Mitchell, that's Wendell Carter of the Bulls. Also had a good game in this one. Trey Young escaping his defender, knocking down the triple. He was feeling it. Trey Bomb. On the other side, quick bounce pass to Antonio Blakeney. Finds Carter Jr. Ooh, a smooth finger roll. Bulls are up big, but Trey Young creating some space for himself, knocking down the there step we go. back three. There we go. All right, Hawks fans, feeling good, Kaka. feeling good. Kaka. Bulls are up three at half. Great ball movement. Trey Young working off the ball this time. Oh, oh you nice. know he's feeling it. You yeah. know he's feeling That's it. Very there. solid. That buddy. was very solid. You're right. At the other end, Wendell Carter Jr. pulling up from downtown, showing it from the outside. Oh. Carter finished with 23 points and six rebounds, but the story was Trey Young in this one. This is the dagger, Whoa. 37 seconds left. Oh. Yes, it was at the end of the shot clock. That's a big but logo, but the feet were still on the logo. Yeah, I love was, it. He's going to have seven, the most three. He's going to have the most volatile season, I think, Trey Young. He's going to have these games where he hits yeah. six or seven, three or four games in a row, and then he might not hit one for like a week. It's going to be so crazy, but when he's on, it's going to be fun to watch. But it, it, it had to feel good for him here. You said he has sort of struggled through a, a majority of his games in summer league, both here and before. But man, he was cooking tonight. And I'm with you, Lee. We're going to see a lot of games like this yeah. from him this year. Well, even this game is kind of a streaky game in and of itself. He was 7 of 13 from 3, 0 of 6 from two-point range. But because he's hitting all those threes, he's still able to score efficiently. Opens everything up for the Hawks inside. That's a game-changing kind of player that they haven't had, even during the Horford and Millsap days, a guy who can just really change the geometry of the court. If he's able to shoot this well during the regular season, the Hawks will be happy. Yeah, the worrisome part for him is that if you got an athletic defender, a little bit bigger defender, that he won't be able to create enough space for himself. Yep. Because most guys are going to be bigger than him. That being said, if he can shoot four-point shots, basically, I, I'm calling a four-point shot so something deep. where like two to three feet behind the line, that's enough space for him. It's, it's just a matter of his shot, and if he can get his shot going, there isn't really a weakness in his game other than the defensive end is where teams will try and seek him out. What do you think of Carter Jr. once again showing flashes? He must be happy as a Bulls fan. Wearing red, is this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely. I put in an order for a red dress yeah. when uh, they were going to the store. But yeah, again, another great game for Wendell Carter. He's just showing his versatility. People compare him to Al Horford, and I think you see in this game exactly why. He was playing a little bit of defense out on the perimeter. He blocked one of Trey Young's three-point shots. He scored off short rolls. He stepped into a three. He had some post-ups that he was hitting. He was doing basically Al Horford things. I don't know that anybody thought that Wendell Carter was going to be uh, in the mix for Rookie of the Year. Maybe he still isn't, but he's been really great out here at Summer League so far. Absolutely. All right, let's keep it going. Let's go Jazz and Heat. Earlier today was the Jazz's 21st pick, Grayson Allen, taking on the Heat's 14th pick of the 2017 draft. Bam, Adebayo. Grayson Allen, though, showing off his aggressiveness early with the flow. Oh, nice. The Dookie fans loved it. There they are. <laughs> Derek Walton Jr. gets the steal. Nice D. He's going to get rejected here at the rim. But Anawamu there with a the fancy pass Ooh. to Bam. Clean Before up. The finish. A little more Grayson. He's going to go back door, back door there. And finishes with the strong one hand dunk. Yeah. That's some sneaky hops there. He had. 17 points, seven boards, and three assists for the game. In the third, Derek Walton Jr. throws the oop in transition. 
And that is Enoamu for the two-hand flush. One more look at that. Way up, guys. I feel blessed. He had 18 and 7. And in the fourth, Duncan Robinson drives. Finds Bam for the easy finish. Bam, good game. 24 points and nine boards. The Heat pick up the eight-point win. Summer League is always fun for me because I don't follow the college game all that closely. I know Grayson Allen is a pest and only is a pest. Right. And then you come see him and he's a ball player. Mm. He, he, he can put it down on the floor. He obviously has hops, obviously has athleticism. And he has a tough side too. Yeah, I agree. He looks like a solid backup point guard. He really is doing all the little things out here. He's cutting, he's passing. He can knock down some shots. And like you said, Tess, it's not bad to have an irritant off the bench, somebody who can get into the mix with the other players. He could definitely fill it, that role for the Jazz. All right, moving on with the highlights. Moving on to the game that we called. We didn't get fired. We're still here. We didn't get a wedgie. <laughs> we didn't get fired for this. that. Mine for this. <laughs> I'm getting a wedgie right now in this dress. Spurs, Blazers. This is Gary Trent Jr. Taking on the uh, Spursies. Gary Trent was feeling it. There's a quick dish from Wade Baldwin to Anthony Simons for the slam dunk. Trent Jr. in the feel and the flow, hitting the easy jumper. Blazers up 10 early. Spursies would fight back in Spursian fashion. Lonnie Walker, the fourth. Queens got up some Lonnie with a fans huge in the crowd. Lonnie fans Watch in the this. Oh! Didn't have a monstrous game, but started off really hot. Obviously, Walker, really Texas hot. Dunker as a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little wordy, but <laughs> quick feed from Caleb Swanigan, oh, showing it from the high post. Big man's got some touch, and Wade Baldwin obviously got some hops there with the contested dunk and the finish. Archie Goodwin finds it open. Gary Trent Jr. Oh, he had time to line that baby up. He had Switch 20 bombs. points, four threes, a game high for a Gary Trent Jr. And it's Wade Baldwin for driving in the paint, laying it up with a strong finish. Wade Baldwin fourth, looking for a job here with the Blazers. Baldwin finished with 16 points and nine assists. This was a hard-fought game that we watched. Yeah, it this looked like it looked like the Blazers. It was going to be a blowout. The Spurs made a run late. Blazers took care of business. We talked about it on the broadcast, though. Gary Trent Jr. It's funny plays nothing like his father did. No. And we even had the stats where we found out how many threes did Gary Trent Sr. hit in the NBA? He hit four yeah. in a pretty long career. And here's his son in one summer league game splashing four. It's, just, it's, it's a, a different game. It's a Gibbs. different game, and he obviously plays a different style, and he's yeah. great at it. He'd only hit one three himself, though, coming into this game, so he wasn't exactly feeling it. But then he got a couple of drop early on. You can see his confidence uh, really grew throughout the game. And at the end of that game, I thought it was good the way that they closed out that game because right. the Spurs came charging back, but some pretty good play by the Blazers afterwards. So good end to them. Let's head to the game that just finished right behind us here in the Thomas and Mack Center. And that was the Lakers and the Knicks. Magic Johnson in the there building. There it is. The legend that is Magic in the first though. Josh Hart drives left. He's gonna throw down a nice one-handed oh. dunk. Lakers were up three early. Hart had 18 points in the first half. In the second half, the Knicks trailed by as many as 25 but they closed the third quarter on a 28-3 run led by Kevin Knox. He had to drill the three in the corner, hit another three up top. He wasn't done. Oh, man. Coach Fizdale, loving it. 16 points in that <laughs> third quarter for Knox. It's only summer league, Fizz. Yeah. But in the fourth, the Lakers will put a pull away with the 14-0 run of their own. Josh Hart, he hits that pull-up three-pointer. Lakers win, Lakers win. This game was all about Kevin Knox. Uh, and he had, as you mentioned, Lee, People excited for Kevin Knox. I hope he takes that confidence mm. into the regular right. season because he has it now. You see him pulling up, you know, behind the three-point arc with a guy in his face. Sometimes that fades for a guy at yeah. summer league. It doesn't carry over. Manuel Mudiay sort of comes to mind. Guys that don't carry it over. I don't know. Kevin Knox seems to have it. He's he's doing chin-ups on the rim every single time <laughs> he can. I don't know if the swag's going to go away. Yeah, he's got a good body for summer league, but it's probably not as effective in the regular NBA season, but I love his aggression. And you know if he are, is throwing down those type of dunks and hitting those threes in MSG, oh, yeah. Knicks fans are going to be going bonkers. <laughs> he could be starting play. the All-Star game this year. As far as we know, who knows? That, they got a lot of voters. With that New York bump, for sure. In the final game today, we had the Kings beating the Grizzlies pretty handily. We got to take a break, though. Lots more still to come on the starters tonight. When we return, <laughs> we're going to talk about whether or not Luka Doncic the starters here in Vegas. Back in a second. Yeah. Back to the starters live from Summer League. It's our final show of the season and 
<laughs> just like this. We lost the bet. We paid up. Um, let's get to a little up-down fun, though. Get the guys behind us. Everybody behind us playing along. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Our first one, the Dallas Mavericks have high hopes for Luka Doncic. And so does Vegas. The Mavs' top pick is favored to win the NBA's Rookie of the Year ahead of the number one pick, DeAndre Ayton, and the second overall pick, Marvin Bagley III, according to betonline.ag. The 19-year-old hasn't even played here, obviously, at Summer League, though he won a title over in the Euroleague. Mm -hmm. He was MVP over there. So are you guys up or down on Doncic being the Rookie of the Year favorite? I think so, yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs down, still behind us. Thumbs up. Oh, a lot of thumbs down in the okay. crowd. Okay, Lee, do you agree with the majority Speak of the for the crowd. I'm only going down because we haven't seen him, and I have seen DeAndre Ayton, and I have seen guys like Kevin Knox, and I think that those guys have already shown that they're going to be good players, and they're going to be in the running. It's always going to be a challenge as well for a Euro guy to come over here and have an immediate impact and be rookie of the year. I think he's going to be a fantastic player, but until I see him play, I'm not ready to make him rookie of the year favorite. Yeah, if it's not Doncic, it's probably going to be Ayton just because he's going to be able to put up massive numbers. The guy has been the focus of trying to be stopped uh, when by Suns opponents out here at Summer League. That's not going to be the case when we get into the regular season. They're going to be focusing on Devin Booker. That being said, I'm up on Luka Doncic being the favorite because he's been playing against former NBA guys, playing with former NBA right. guys when he was playing over in Europe. Usually goes to the most ready, most experienced guy. And clearly to me, Doncic is that guy. Yeah, I, I think he's going to have the ball in his hands more than any other rookie or just as much as any other rookie. He's as polished as any other rookie. He's got the opportunity to get a lot of minutes as much as any other rookie. And uh, he's got the aura. I like the fact that he hasn't played. You know, that's why he is up there, I think, yeah. in the odds. Yeah. Because he'd come down, there would be mistakes. If he had been as, struggling yeah, or there, something like that. Yeah. Of course. Right now, he's this, he's this unknown. Yeah. He's, he's this foreign player, this yeah. god, this demigod <laughs> right now. All right, let's hear from you guys out there on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Our next one. It's been a weird free agency period for the Houston Rockets. Despite signing Chris Paul to a four-year max deal, they lost Trevor Ariza to the Suns on the first day of free agency, and then yesterday they lost Luke Bamute, who went back to the Clippers. And maybe Melo's coming. What's going on here? They haven't signed a Cabela as well. Are you up or down on the Rockets' very weird offseason so far? Yeah, at this point, I, I think you got to be down. Down, down, down. Uh, look at these strong yeah. bumps. Okay, majority of people down. But yeah. Lee, you're yeah. up. Why I, you I'm up because they still got their first target, Chris Paul. They re signed him. He didn't walk for nothing. Obviously, Mbamute and Ariza going is bad. And if Capello, Capella goes, then that's also bad, but they've still got a chance for Capella. I think if he comes back, overall, it's still going to be a success, and they're still obviously in the chance to get Carmelo Anthony. So I think it's still positive right now. But everything is about Golden State, and they were sort of on the verge of not having enough guys who could play against Golden State already, and then you lose Ariza and Bob Mute, who, who played against Golden yeah. State. And then I'm trying to see. Only, I can't, yeah, I can't quite here. see it. Yeah, I'm right, right. Here. <laughs> and, and then they only have six guys back who played against Golden State yeah, last year. read about seven, though, against the Warriors. So. Exactly, but now they're only six, including Capella, five, and I assume they're going to have Capella back, and who's going to be the seventh? Mello. Well, and, and, so, and so do you feel as good as you did last year against the Warriors? I, I don't think you do. Yeah. I think the Rockets, if they're able to bring Mello in, would think they've upped their talent level still. And like Leah's saying, bringing back Chris Paul is huge. If they're able to bring back Capella, that kind of salvages things. But they just lost the switchiness. They lost the thing that people said, oh, this is maybe what is going to be the possibility for somebody be, to beat the Warriors, considering they were up 3-2 going into game six. I, I just think it's a step backwards and hopefully uh, the Rockets are able to sort of break the ship for the way out of here. This, like this thing on my head, they're a top heavy team. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have six returning yeah. guys who played against Golden State. CB3, Harden, Gordon, Tucker, Green, and, and probably Capella. Who's, who's going to be the seventh guy? Mello? Okay, there's your seven. Maybe Michael Carter-Williams, RJ Hunter. I mean, they're, they're just top heavy. All right, final one here. Someone get Warren Legary on the phone. We got a great idea, idea here from Jazz star Donovan Mitchell. Where's Albert Hall? Who wants to add a little more flavor to Summer League on Sunday. Mitchell tweeted, there should definitely be a Summer League dunk contest. Eyes emoji, eyes emoji. <laughs> <laughs> the fans are seem happy with Put the up idea. your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here. Yeah. No brainer. <laughs> Who what? doesn't love dunks? <laughs> Who doesn't love dunks? They let us call a summer it's league sweaty, game. I know. They will let people do things what they want out here. We've got some super athletic guys who aren't going to ever have a chance to be in the NBA dunk contest. They take four a year. Let everybody dunk who wants to. Yeah, absolutely. And look, remember the last time they had the All Star Weekend in Vegas? Gerald Green, he jumped over the 
Vegas blackjack table. <laughs> right, right, right. We just get dressed up as showgirls again and someone dunks over the four of us. <laughs> no, but the, the point is you can actually experiment with the format of the dunk contest yeah, as well. Point. So, you know, why not? Like throw a few more guys in there, try some props, try without props and see what works. You might find that ingredient that we've been missing the last few years. Hey, oh. props for that idea, man. Hey. Props. <laughs> Sweet. All right, we have to take a Sweet. break. Let's hear from you guys on Twitter, hashtag the stars. I'm going to imagine everybody's up on a summer league dunk contest. Good idea, Donovan Mitchell. Good idea. All right. When we come back, we're going to announce our all Vegas summer league teams now that the preliminary round is done. There'll be some debating on this one. Look what it is. First team, our guards, Wade Baldwin, the fourth with the Blazers, Josh Hart from the Lakers, Jetty Osmond from the Cavs, John Collins from the Hawks, and DeAndre Ayton, the number one overall pick from the Suns. As you notice there, a lot of those guys outside of Ayton, they played before in the league. That mm. makes sense. Yeah, well, you see already from John Collins immediately immediate growth and improvement from last season. The season ended in April for the Hawks. He's obviously been in the gym working on his game, knocking down those three-pointers. He played one game and the Hawks were like, nah, you're done. That's all we need to see from you. So, uh, fantastic. I'm really excited for him coming into this season, especially with Trey Young there as well. There's some building blocks now for the Hawks. And I should point out, we are just looking at the Vegas Summer League portion of mm. this, though. Collins having a great couple of games before getting well, here. Well, yeah, but here Definitely I'm talking comes about yeah. for sure. Well, you mentioned that most of the guys on our first team are second-year players or third-year players, but DeAndre Ayton, to me, has proved why he is the number yep. one pick this year in the draft. Uh, he was getting double teams in the first half of his first summer league game, which is impressive. He didn't get to show the full breadth of his skills, I don't think, just because the way summer league is maybe isn't totally situated perfectly for a big man to flash his game, yep. but he was still able to score efficiently, still able to hit the glass and do all the things you want to see a big man do besides scoring. We'll see him do more than just catch lobs and get offensive rebounds come season time. Primarily what, what comprises summer league are guys vying for their jobs, yep. not the stars like, like, like DeAndre Ayton. So that's why Wade Baldwin on here is important to me because I think he earned his contract here. His contract gets guaranteed over the next 10 days or so. The way he played on both ends of the floor was like he was playing for his livelihood. Uh, yeah. and, and I thought he fought, you know, after being a first round pick in 2016, he, he fought on both ends. He was yapping when we were calling that game today. Defensively. Fiery was, guy, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And, and he's, a, he's a real, real athlete, a true athlete. It was, it was fun to watch him play. Let's take a look at our all Vegas second team. This is tough to do, because there's a lot of guys we're leaving off these lists, but we have as our guards, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He came on the starters last night. Trayvon Blewett with the Pelicans. Kevin Knox with the Knicks has had some monster games here. Troy Brown Jr. from the Wizards and our other forwarder, uh, forward, excuse me, Carter Jr. there with the Bulls. We talked about him a little bit earlier. I'll, I'll start with Shea. He has shown an ability to get by anyone put in front of him. Mm. He can blow by absolutely anyone. He's very confident at it. And I, what I like is he can finish around the rim. He's had some crafty finishes, slick finishes, but he showed off at times a little pull-up jumper as well. Mm -hmm. Not getting all the way in there, pulling up around the free throw line and knocking it down. He's improved each game here for sure at Summer League. He's averaging 25 and three. He's got six steals and three blocks. That's uh, The Clippers are very happy, I would imagine, with this pick right now. Some people are labeling him the best point guard in the draft right. when you consider Doncic is there and Trey Young as well. So he's shown uh, that this was a good pick by the Clippers, I think, and they're going to like him going forward. And he's a real, real big point guard too. Mm. Uh, well, and I like how we put Trayvon Blewett out there with uh, the Pelicans because seemingly the Pelicans are always looking for a shooter. Definitely. Each and every year to play around Anthony Davis. They've got Nikola Mirotic there, and if Trayvon Blewett can shoot anywhere close to the percentage that he shot out here, he's going to play a lot. Yeah, it's a team that was uh, very deep into the salary cap. That's part of the reason DeMarcus Cousins wasn't a huge target for them. So if they're able to get any sort of contribution from guys on small contracts, that really helps them out in the future. So that's who we have on our All Vegas first and second league summer league teams. Right now, I mean, there's a lot of basketball still to be played, but let's hear from you guys. Who should have been included in one of those two teams? Let us know at hashtag the starters. We've got one more break. That's it. And when we return, a very solid play from a very solid showgirl. <laughs> <laughs>
is nearly complete, but we got time for our final very solid uh, And it is a beauty. It was from the game we called today between the Blazers and the Spurs. And it's Trey, not Kirby, it's <laughs> McKinney Jones with a boomerang too. You know I love a boomerang to finish. Not just a boomerang, a beautiful three-point swish, bomb as well. Here it is again. Drops it off, goes back and gets it. Turns around, knocks it in. That's what I call a very solid play. It must be the last show of the season because Lee Ellis is excited. It's time for the play of the day. We showed you some great highlights, some great dunks throughout all these games. Well, let's sneak you at one pass here. George Niang, the touch. Whoa. Just give it a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Yeah. We're in we're George Niang with that pass. I love it. Great stuff right there. Now it's time for a little different thing we'd like to squeeze in here. The Celtics Gordon Hayward and his wife Robin have two daughters. Here they're revealing the gender of their third child and Gordon was very excited. <laughs> hey daddy, can you help me? Help me. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Whoa, it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's always oh, happy. So He's always happy. All right, the tournament portion of Summer League starts on Wednesday. Go to NBA.com to check out the bracket and the games. That's it for us. Thanks so much to the fans. Thanks to everyone in the truck, everyone here on set for making, well, this magic happen. Uh, we'll have a drop-off podcast for you guys on Friday, so check our iTunes feed. All right, thank you so much for joining us, folks. And remember, this stays in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. This is right here. Embrace the summer, people.